Hey guys, so I wanted to talk to you today about the do's and don'ts for residency interviews. medical school you graduated you've applied to residency programs chose your specialty of course and now it's time to do your interviews for residency programs some of you guys may be in the midst of your interviews right now so why should you listen to my opinion well I did have a successful residency interview process I was able to interview with quite a few programs most importantly my top three choices were ones that I interviewed with and ended up getting one of my top three choices so I'm very happy with where I ended up and I also had the opportunity to become a chief resident in my last year and had the opportunity to interview medical students who wanted to become a part of our program. Alright so what is the setup for an interview? There's so many different styles. There's the traditional interview where you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody. There's another interview type where you have one person asking you the questions but another colleague is just kind of sitting there observing how you may fidget, how you may appear to be lying. There's another style where you may have maybe a group of 30 interviewers where you're going from station to station and they're asking you about this one particular scenario and they're asking each applicant about this one particular scenario. So it's kind of like an assembly line of interviewers. Another style of interview is where they have a group activity where you're given a particular challenge and amongst all of you, you have to determine um, who the key players are going to be in this challenge and come up with your answer. So whether it's a puzzle or um, a reenactment and they want to observe how people could be team players, how some people could be leaders, how people could be followers. Let's talk about appearance. You want to stand out for your academics, your professionalism, and some of that comes across in your appearance. So you don't want to be plain and forgotten, but you also don't want to be over the top. For instance, you don't want to come in with a short skirt, high knee boots, you know, fiery red lipstick. You also may not want to come in wearing a black suit just like several of the other candidates. It may be good to have an off-color suit um, instead of a shirt for women. Maybe you can wear a blouse with a little bit of a detail, nothing too loud, maybe a little frill if you're into that. The less distractions, the better. So as you can see, I don't have, you know, tamed hair today, but it is pulled back. Basically, you don't want your hair to be a distraction. Well, same thing with people with long hair or braids. You might have a tendency to play around with them. If you don't, that's great. You just don't want whatever is on your head, in your ears, on your fingers to be a distraction. You can wear nail polish, obviously. You want it to be well done, but you don't want it to be loud and outstanding where you're talking like this and all they can see is your nails. And while most people don't really care about the details of what you're wearing, they may subconsciously remember you because of a distraction. They also may be subconsciously annoyed because of a distraction. Tapping your foot, tapping your pen, chewing your gum. Your body language is a large part of your appearance. Make sure that you are sitting upright, you're not kind of slouching, you're not disinterested, looking down at the floor. Maintain eye contact. Make sure that you show that you're engaged in a conversation. Make sure that you are actually engaged in a conversation and not thinking about your next move. That's the most natural thing to be. And if you're not confident, make sure that you're working on your confidence towards this interview process. It's really important to be confident in who you are. You made it that far. The fact that they called you in for an interview means that you've had many things on your application not just one thing that they are interested in. So be confident, be happy that you're there, show them that you want to be there, show them why you will be an excellent addition to their program. When asked a question, make sure that you answer that question. Make sure that your answers are concise, but not so short and not too long. What is your greatest attribute? Well, 
I think I'm a great listener. That should not be the end of your answer. I think I'm a great listener. Well, at the same time, I could be a great talker. Um, I listen very well. My parents say I listen well. My friends say I listen well. My colleagues say I listen well. Say I listen. You don't want to be too verbose. Keep it concise. Use an example when you're speaking. That gives a lot more credence to what you're saying. I do think that I'm a great listener. Patients have been able to confide in me during interviews, during my psychiatric rotation, and they have complimented me in feeling comfort in speaking with me during the interview process. There is a short answer. It's concise, straight to the point. You displayed an example that also shows your clinical skills. Great. Act like you want to be there. You should want to be there. Be interested. Find something that interests you in the program. If there's gotta be a reason why you applied, show it. Don't go in there expecting that they have read every single last detail of your application. Do expect that they've reviewed some of your application. You want to be able to convey some of the messages that are in your application, as well as some of the ones that you couldn't get across in your application. This is a good time to dress up your application make a statement, make sure that they remember you and want you to come back. A great strategy is to keep in mind three points that you want to convey to each one of your interviewers. Three points that you don't want them to leave without knowing in that interview session. When discussing all the different applicants, they may be able to communicate more easily as to who you are, what they thought was great about you. You do want to have questions, good questions, not questions that they already answered for you or were in the reading materials that they provided you prior to your interview. You do want to be personable. Doctors are not robots. Touch on your extracurricular activities. They wanna know what your other attributes are. It's very easy to look at academics, look at your GPA, look at your step one score, but it's hard to convey your personality and what you're truly interested in in terms of hobbies and activities. So this is where you need to shine. Tell them the things about your qualities. What will you bring to the table? What will you be able to offer the program and what you you plan to gain from the program why you want to be in that particular city why should they choose you out of all these other candidates it's also important to relate to the residents if something comes out in an interview where you have a common interest it's okay to talk a little bit about that one part of the interview that's a little sneaky is the day before the interview most residency programs invite you out to dinner with the residents the day prior to the interview those people at the dinner could be the ones interviewing you or they could just be your colleagues some of them may eventually be your upper levels so don't think that because they're ahead of you that you're not gonna see them again they are vested in the program and they want to know that their lower levels would be able to be a good team player so the pre-interview is a more laid-back time you know you kind of want to let your hair down per se um, you're not expected to be very formal don't want to be trashy you want to be maybe business casual I wouldn't come there in a suit it's a time to just kind of be relatable and kind of relax also ask some questions you can ask questions about the interview process you can ask questions about the residency program and also relate to the residents on a more personal and genuine level but you also don't want to be fooled and drinking game and then you can't even wake up in the morning don't do any of that please don't the residents will also see how you interact with the other interview candidates, how you interact with other people, maybe even the restaurant staff, how engaged you are, and are you on your phone. These are all things that the residents are keeping track of and they are gonna report back to the program directors and the interviewers the next day. If I had to summarize the most important points about interviewing for residency programs is to one, be presentable, show quality versus quantity, make sure you get across your three points, be personable, be who you are and be confident, share what you love about the program as well as the city, and share what you think the program can do for you. So there you have it, some do's and don'ts for interviewing for residency programs. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If you have any further advice for other people, leave them below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. I can answer them in a future video or one of my Q&A sessions that we plan to have shortly. We are not all competition to each other. Help each other out. And I wish you guys all the best during your residency interviews. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to get weekly videos and updates. Like this video if you felt like you learned something from it. Oh, 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 oh,